In this video, we continue with our chapter 5.1 uh, content and examples. So we are now going to take a look at the distance between two vectors and build on our knowledge of the norm or length of vectors. So you remember this formula from calculus that the distance between two vectors in Rn is uh, the difference of each component squared, add it up, and then we square root our uh, final calculation there to get that distance formula. Here's what it looks like in two dimensions over here. If you uh, have u, vector u with endpoint u1, u2, and vector v with endpoint v1, v2, then that dashed pink line here is the distance between them. And you'd say, well, I just use Pythagorean theorem in two dimensions. Uh, and find the differences, which is just what we're doing over here in the distance formula. So this is your familiar distance formula. Um, important things to notice are that the distance is always going to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. So if your vectors are the same vectors, you're going to get zero distance. Otherwise, your distance is going to be measured positively uh, because when we're squaring those differences, we get positive values there. Uh, the second one is what we just said. Our distance is zero if and only if you've got the same vector u equals v. So this is the only case you get zero if u and v are the same vector. And then it doesn't matter which value you put first because you're squaring the differences. So positive or negative, we get the same squared value. So you can do the distance formula of u first and v or the distance formula of v first and u. So our definition of the distance between two vectors is to say that the distance between u and v is the norm of u minus v. And here's how that looks right now in two dimensions, u1 minus v1 squared plus u2 minus v2 squared, uh, all square rooted. And then here it is in n dimensions right up here. Our familiar distance formula. So let's take a look at an example. I'm gonna let u be negative two, three, four, and v is gonna be one, two, negative two. So I wanna find the length of u, I'm gonna normalize v, and I wanna find the distance between u and v. So here's my uh, image over here. This dashed line, uh, again, coordinates with the distance u minus v here in R3, three space. So if we do the norm of u by hand, we're just gonna square each component and add them up. So negative two squared is gonna give us a four, three squared is gonna give us a nine, and four squared is gonna give us a 16. So that four plus nine plus 16 is the 29, and that all gets square rooted. So that's where our square root of 29 is coming from. I don't care if you put things in uh, root form or decimal form. Uh, if you do in decimal form round to like, uh, four or five decimal places for a good rule of thumb so that you're not um, making too many rounding errors. If you're doing some sort of uh, code for engineering or you're building a bridge or a computer chip, you want to keep it in square root form um, because it's much more accurate and a computer can calculate to, you know, a hundred decimal places if we need for an irrational root. Uh, for the purposes of our homework, you guys can round to four or five decimal places if you prefer or leave it in root form. Okay, so then to normalize v, we have to take v and divide it by the norm of v. So the norm of v is the 1 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. Those are the components of v. Uh, and then all that gets square rooted. So that gives us a 1 plus a 4 plus a 4. So that's a square root of 9 or a 3. So to normalize v, we take each component and divide it by that 3. So we have 1 third, 2 thirds, and negative 2 thirds as the normalized version of v, and you could verify the norm of that normalized v is going to be 1. Uh, you could just check, oh yeah, 1 third squared is going to be 1 ninth, 2 thirds squared is going to be 4 ninths, negative 2, squared four, negative two thirds squared is going to be 4 ninths, so you're going to end up with 9 ninths or 1, and then you root it and you still have a 1. Okay, so let's see how we find the distance between u and v. So the distance between u and v is a uh, negative two minus one, which is gonna give us a negative three squared. Uh, three minus two, which gives us one squared. And four minus negative two, which gives us a six squared. And so when we add all those up, we get root 46 or 0.5. 
uh, six plus seven, eight, two, three, three, if we go to five decimal places. The good news is, is we can calculate this in SIMPI. So when you are inputting your uh, vectors in SIMPI, we talked last chapter about how you input your vectors as um, column matrices or row matrices, and it doesn't make a difference. So here I showed how you could input U as a uh, column matrix or a row matrix. So when we do the row matrix, notice you've got the double brackets here. But if you just want you to be a column matrix, just input single brackets here and you get column matrix um, to represent you. So it's your choice whether you want to use column matrices or row matrices for vectors. Just make sure you're consistent. So if I put U in as a column matrix, I want to make sure I input V as a column matrix. And if I put U in as a row matrix, make sure I input V as a row matrix for my calculations to work out. Okay, so here's U and V as column matrices, and here's U and V as row matrices. You can verify either way our calculations work, again, as long as you're consistent. So here's the code to find the norm or the length of U. You just do u.norm function. And so the norm function is norm, N-O-R-M, with the parentheses. Just leave your parentheses empty. And that gives us the norm of u, root 29, which matches just what we saw back here when we did it by hand. Here it is in two spots. Now, SIMPI is symbolic. So it's going to give you uh, your values in square root form. So that's just fine for our purposes. Um, I think I showed you back in the very beginning of the semester how to get the approximations if you want and simply the decimal approximations, but it's not necessary. The square root form is actually more accurate. And then to get the norm of V, uh, V dot norm in parentheses. And notice I use capital U's and capital V's when I define my uh, vectors here. So you have to be consistent and keep capitals. If you wanted lowercase, that'll work just as well too. So it's not necessary to say capital or lowercase. Uh, I just am in the habit of using capitals uh, in SIMPI, but you could use lowercase u and v or any other letters that you like. So our norm for v here is three, and that of course matches what we got by hand. So we are seeing here, there's our threes when we normalized. So we're seeing here that SIMPI is reliable. Um, and then the way to find the distance formula or uh, what we call the norm of u minus v here. Did I give you that imagery here? Yeah, this way, the norm of u minus v. And simply, you just say u minus v, uh, and I put mine in parentheses. You could also name it, you know, like w or some other distance. So I said u minus v in parentheses dot the norm function, which is just norm with the parentheses during the function. And there's my root 46. So you are welcome to use SIMPI to calculate uh, these norms for you. With a few short numbers like we had here, it's probably about the same amount of time to type it in SIMPI as it is to calculate by hand. Um, if you're doing group problems, you could use SIMPI as a way to verify calculations classmates did by hand. Okay, let's take a look at how we find the angle between vectors. So we know the distance u minus v is this dashed line here, but we wanna know well, how do we find this angle between the vectors. So um, the norm of u minus v, we can use the law of cosines from R2 to say, well, that's just the norm of u squared plus the norm of v squared minus two times the norm of u times the norm of v cosine theta. So you saw this back in geometry class and calculus. And then we can expand these out. So component wise, uh, if we expand it out and cancel out our square roots on both sides. So these would normally have square roots on both sides, but we canceled them out since it was on both sides of the second line. Then we have this relationship where the left side is uh, u1 minus v1 squared plus u2 minus v2 squared. And the right side is each of those squares minus two times the norm of u times the norm of v times cosine theta. So expanding out the left side using good old FOIL, we get 
this expansion here, and we can see that the squares are going to cancel out the u1 squared, the v1 squared, the u2 squared, and the v2 squared with the other side of the equation. So you can go through and do your cancellation here. Cancel out your u1 squared, cancel out your v1 squared, cancel out your u2 squared, and your v2 squares. And then we end up back here with this simplified equation that uh, negative 2 u1 v1 minus 2 u2 v2, just the terms that were left on the left side, equals negative 2 norma u times norma v times cosine theta. So then we can cancel out that 2. And we get u1 uh, v1 plus u2 v2 equals norm of u times norm of v times cosine theta. And so then we can use that to define the dot product and the angle between the two vectors. So our dot product here is the calculation on the left. This is the dot product in two dimensions. So algebraically, the dot product is when we multiply component-wise the corresponding entries u1, v1, and u2, v2, and then add them up. So we say the dot product is the sum of the products of each of the corresponding components. Um, and so we define the dot product in n dimensions as u1, v1, plus u2, v2, plus all the way through un, vn. So again, we just think of the dot product as kind of component-wise multiplication added up. Um, and then visually, we can think about it as the numerator here of this calculation here. So when we get cosine theta by itself, we have u1 v1 plus u2 v2, all divided by the norm of v and the norm of u. I said it backwards, norm of u times norm of v is how I wrote it. But we know we can multiply in any order. So this numerator here is our dot product So that's kind of how you can think about it is uh, it's the numerator of the cosine of the angle. And if you really want to get into it, remember uh, cosine uh, of an angle is that relationship between um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So you could draw some um, diagrams out seeing how it looks. Okay. So the angle then, if we want to solve for theta here, we say theta is the uh, arc cosine of u dot v, or in two dimensions, u1 v1 plus u2 v2, divided by the norm of u and the norm of v. And then uh, we have this restriction. This only holds for angles between 0 and pi. So angles there in the first um, two quadrants of the plane, if we're in R2, in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. So then we get the definition of what it means for vectors to be orthogonal. So we say two vectors, u and v and r and are orthogonal, or what you know as perpendicular, or what you know as the right angle, when their dot product is zero. So notice that the zero vector is orthogonal to every vector, because it's just a point in the plane, uh, if you're imagining it in two dimensions. And so it's going to be perpendicular to every vector. So often we are going to represent the vectors in our end by their coordinate matrices relative to the standard basis. So that's where we get these column matrices. So when you're doing the dot product, if you're writing it out, you can see, oh yeah, it's kind of like if I said U transpose, the rows of U, uh, U is a row matrix multiplied by V. So think about taking, oh yeah, here's my U1, UN rows here multiplied by this column, the one through the end. So you can visualize it that way as thinking about matrix multiplication uh, because the U transpose V is gonna give you those products. But the warning is be careful because in our formulas, we're gonna be sloppy and pretend like this is equal to that scalar, that's the dot product. But if you do it in Mathematica or TI-89, um, or if you do it in, um, Simply, that product is going to be a one-by-one one matrix, not a scalar. 
So you would have to then uh, just write down the scalar value and use a scalar value. If you're trying to do it with a computer program, it's not going to let you multiply the matrix by um, a value like if the matrix is a scalar. So you have to pull that scalar value out of the matrix if you're using it that way. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here and we'll see how Simpy does dot product really nicely for us. So uh, we're gonna use the same u is negative two, three, four, and v is one, two, negative two from our previous example. Here's our same visual here of u and v in 3Ds. So we want to find the dot product u dot v and the angle between uh, u and v. So for dot product, you heard me say u dot v, so that's a common way we say it. Um, for shorthand, we just say u dot v instead of saying the dot product of u and v. So by hand, we just multiply each component. So negative 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 4 times negative 2. So that's a negative 2 plus a 6 minus an 8 or plus a negative 8. So you get negative 4 there. If you want to check it in Simpy, Simpy is just your vector u dot v. So you make sure you've got your first vector dot uh, and then the word dot and then your second vector. I should say vector here. So you put it just like that. Now uh, you might be thinking, well, we can multiply in any order, so it's not going to matter whether we say u dot v or v dot u, which is exactly right. So uh, u dot v is equal to v dot u. That's the first property of uh, dot products that we'll see in the next theorem, theorem 5.3. Okay, and then the norm of u, we already showed how we can calculate that in Simpy. So that was the square root of 29. The norm of v was three. Um, and so theta equals the arc cosine of negative four root three root 29. So if you're doing this kind of calculation, you can leave it in this form, I'm happy with that. Or if you want the decimal approximation, uh, crank it out either on your TI calculator or you could type it in Google to get that value. Um, and then if you want to translate from radians to degrees, you know that formula is from pre-calc and you could put it in degrees. So I am fine with you leaving your equations in what we think of as exact form with the arc cos of uh, your values you're evaluating inside of the parentheses. And then you can use a calculator uh, to get the decimal approximation in radians or the value in degrees if you like, but it's not necessary for our purposes. You can leave it in arc cos form because technically that's what we think of as an exact answer. Okay, so in the next video, we will see the properties of the dot product.